Hey guys, so I have this Velociraptor rig in Maya. This is from Prong CG artist. He uploads some amazing rigs out there, and almost all his rigs are, you know, free of cost or for available for a very cheap price. So I highly, you know, recommend his rigs to you. So we'll we will be using this rig to create this walk cycle, and I will try to you know create this walk cycle in as short time as possible, maybe two or three hours. Um, obviously we can go more in details later but for now I'll try to keep it short so that you guys can see uh, how I approach walk cycles and what's uh, what's exactly my workflow behind it so let's start it so usually I won't recommend you to you know um, like I won't suggest you to animate without using references but for this one i'll be just going straight ahead because i have been animating dinosaurs for a very long time now so this is video is just to showcase how you know i approach the animation things uh, it's same if i was using a reference here so the process is obviously same but for now i'll be you know doing it from my imagination but yeah i highly recommend you guys to you know use references so let's say for velociraptor you could use some references from ostriches or some birds or you know cassowary so there are plenty of you know different birds so yeah so usually i start uh, from the side view so let's say 24 fps and the thing i check is we have this undo infinite on and for this one i will be using this tool called animbot because it saves us a lot of time but if you are you know beginning in the animation uh, industry i won't suggest um, at least you should be aware of how to you know achieve things manually also so i'll be using animbot to mirror you know mirror the animation to other side and you know delay it so let's start it uh, first what i do is let's say i'll keep it keep the time range from 0 to maybe 50 we can you know change it according to our requirement like if we if we feel if it's very slow then we'll you know reduce the keyframes if we feel it's fast then we will increase the keyframes so i'll just keep it 50 for now so so we get exactly 50 frames okay and 25 will, will be the middle frame so i'll just create quickly create maybe this pose let's say kind of a you know contact pose okay so this is not following let me see why it's not following okay this is working with the um this is weird it should move along with the you know root controller also yeah but it's fine okay so let's just move the body a bit downwards yeah like right now you, if you if you notice the feet the heel is going below the ground but it's fine for now uh, we can refine these things in the later stages for now we'll just create a basic pose okay so i usually start with the legs and according to the legs i give movement in the hips and if this was a quadruped maybe uh, like a four legged uh, animal or some you know other dinosaur then i would have you know animated the back legs first then the hip then the front legs then the chest be because the chest and hip depends on the movement of the back legs and the front legs so in this one we just have two two legs so you know we just have to animate these and accordingly we have to you know give motion in the hip like this is my workflow it's not you know perfect or it's not mandatory to follow this thing only like everybody has their own workflow but i find this thing you know helpful so let's start so i'll just put a key okay we have the graph editor here um, let me just check if it if the sorry about that so yeah let's jump into it keyframe keyframe okay so let's say on frame 25 i have moved it backwards something like this okay the auto key is on so it automatically creates a key here and it goes back again like this okay so what i'll do is maybe here create a rough passing pose i don't work in the you know stepped mode most of the time i try to avoid it i find it easier to you know work in the 
um, spline mode from the beginning itself. So let's say this is a very rough you know, animation. So now if I can see everything is moving together. So what I'll do is I'll just, you know, okay. So one other thing which we have to keep in mind is whenever you are creating a cycle, right? So when the feet is on the ground, so the gr translate Z graph, okay, when the feet is on the ground should be linear. So you can see this is a bit curvy right now. So I'll select these keys and create put them in linear mode because when the feet is planted, it cannot slide at all, right? So when we, even when we are walking, the when, once we plant the feet, it stays on that place only and our body moves forward. So same thing has to happen in animation also. So we cannot, you know, change the speed in between unless we are intentionally, you know, trying to make it slip. So right now it's not going to slip when we make it progressive. Okay. So I, you know, um, generally create a on the spot cycle and then convert it into progressive. So I'll, you know, make this linear. So now I can see it, you know, suddenly starts moving forward. So maybe I can, you know, after three, four frames, I'll give a key here. So I have shortcuts added in my you know hotkey editor for insert key you can right click on the graph and then click on insert key it does it it's for the same thing but i have created a shortcut called uh, in keyboard alt z so as soon as i press that press that sorry it's just z my bad so it creates a key on the you know frame in on in the timeline so i'll just move it here okay so now i want this one to be you know in a good arc so it's linear till here and then it goes into you know auto or spline mode after this so we get this you know slight ease ease out here and then it moves forward so the first and last frame should be same maybe I can keep it here something like this and here now i feel that it's very you know linear like it's very going very slow there is no timing difference i try to keep these things included um, from the beginning pass or the you know, blocking pass itself at least the basic things so i get a good feel of how it's looking instead of keeping it in uh, step mode so it depends from person to person uh, there is no best workflow so i'll you know maybe put a key here and you know make him move forward so this one will be linear i can break the tangents so that i can you know independently work on one side only this this side is not getting affected at all okay so it's it's in linear right now so i'll you know move it like this so now you can see there is some uh, timing difference so i feel i i am feeling that the f this overall movement right the movement uh, going to backwards and then coming forward it feels a bit slow according to the size of this velociraptor i am you know considering the size of this uh, velociraptor to you know the jurassic world movie um, similar to that one so because the design is also say same right the uh, velociraptor called blue blue in that movie so it's kind of same so maybe we can you know overall reduce the frames instead of 50 let's try 40 so I have just animated uh, translate Y, translate Z and rotation X. Okay. So what we can do is um, I'll just retime it quickly. You can either retime using the time slider. You can, you know, drag and drop or you can, you know, select all these keys. Sorry. And we have this tool called region tool. So I select these, this select all my keys and drag it from the end to frame 40. It, you know, equally spreads it so I feel 40 frames are much better time timing wise so I'll I'll you know keep this one so and also I'll just save my file um, let me quickly create a folder um, velociraptor rock cycle Let's go zero one. Okay, great. So we have a rough timing here. 
so now the leg is stretching stretching and you know these things we will take care of all these things so now the middle frame is 20 20 frames right so that is fine now what we can do is we can include you know some rotations and other other axis in there now right now we have the rotation x so let's give a bit bit of you know ball roll and this ankle rotation maybe or you know this toe rotation from the front so whenever the feet is you know going to get up so whenever we are you know there is a foot roll happening whenever the feet goes up so it, the front part of the feet should remain on the ground and the heel you know goes up something like this so we will try to implement that thing here also so i put a key at the first frame and the last frame so i can see it's you know rotating almost after 22 or 23 frames so maybe four or five five frames before i start giving this roll so as soon as i give the roll you can see the stretching is also you know getting reduced so see so heel goes up maybe we can increase the value slightly and so that um, it it's not stopping suddenly i'll just give a, one more key here so there is like a ease out in this part so the, this roll happens and then it you know merges back into maybe zero here okay so i have a shortcut for almost every useful thing in my keyboard so like uh, for hiding and showing the controllers the default shortcut is alt 1 but i have changed it to alt f because i find it easier to you know um, like it's closer to the alt key so i have kept it alt f and uh, for inserting the key i have the shortcut added zero and to check the graph uh, for a cycle right we have to go to graph editor and make sure you have infinity turned on okay so once you have the infinity turned on what you have to do is whenever you are working on any controller select that controller or maybe let's say select all the controllers so just the controllers and you go into curves pre-infinity cycle curves post infinity and then cycle so what this do is it basically shows you how the graph will be so this is basically looping okay so you have to make sure this is turned on whenever you are working on a cycle at least for normal shots this is not required but for you know the cycles you have to do it now i feel like this front pose is a bit too much like it's going moving forward a bit too much maybe i can reduce the value um like this maybe this is this should looks fine to me so we have a basic role happening here but now we want more more of you know leading action so when you are you know lifting your foot so first the roll happens and then you know the foot um, pivots from the um, almost from the front part of the you know feet almost the middle finger you can say so first the roll happens and then it you know rotates like this and then it you know merges into the rotation x so we will give this thing also here so i select this toe controller this is toes end F put a key on first frame and last frame and after the roll happens right so i'll start you know rotating it upwards so you can see there is this leading movement here but now it's stopping suddenly like right there are there are two beats happening one and then two so we have to merge it merge this because there is no ease out here so it's you know going up and then suddenly coming back so i'll put a key here so that it blends for a few more frames and then it goes into zero zero position so now you can see it's a bit more smoother yeah this is i won't say perfect but yeah this is much better for you know for a starting part at least yeah so we have three rotations going on right now first is the ball rotation second is the you know front toe rotation and the third is the main foot controller rotation x so this one is also you know um, not having any ease out so maybe we can give ease out here 
or what I feel is we can even re remove this rotation if required but let's keep it for now so um, yeah so as I was talking about you know uh, shortcuts so I have shortcut for you know turning on the pre infinity cycle and post infinity cycle also in my keyboard that is alt 1 and alt 2 in the graph editor so as soon as I press alt 1 you can see there is this pre infinity graph and as soon as I press alt 2 there is this post infinity graph so shortcuts are very helpful you should also you know try to add them in your workflow it saves a lot of time so now we have a basic movement from the side view okay okay let's do one more thing so we have one more controller here i guess yeah this one so this rotates the feet like this so what i'll try to do is when it's coming forward right and you know just before landing so i'll if you see some references of chicken or ostrich basically they plant their feet like this instead of you know keeping it like completely flat like this or you know putting the heel first they try to you know touch the fingers first and then the rest of the feet you know lands so to give that pose i can use this controller because we have this in the rig so in almost in the passing pose i you know rotate it forward it's not perfect but this should give a good feeling of that you know motion and when it's planting it should it can go back to zero so there is the shape change happening here okay so i feel it's still going too much forward so maybe i can you know move the whole graph a bit downwards so that we get get stretch in the maybe the back part oops something is wrong with my keyboard yeah for now let's keep it like this so after this i'll go to the back view okay and because right now we have just animated it from the side view so we need to give side side to side motion also so usually what i do personally is i keep the feet a bit more inwards so oops my bad <coughs> sorry about that so I you know select the translate X key and you know move it over overall a bit more inwards okay and I can you know rotate the feet outwards so I select the rotate Y key and then I can you know maybe move it rotate it more outwards okay so now you can see it's you know closer to the middle point of the grid so here now what I'll do is when the feet is moving forward right when it takes off the ground so i'll at that point i'll move the feet outwards so that we get a get a arc from the back view or the front view so it's not going straight but it's going outwards and then coming back inwards so you get a nice organic movement here so you can see there is this difference in the movement right earlier it was going completely flat so make sure to include this almost all the time even if you are animating a biped or some you know other creature also you should go for it because it gives life to your you know animation these small things you know adds a lot so now if we see it from the front view you can see it's moving slightly outwards and then coming back in and maybe i can keep move it more inwards yeah so let's keep it like this for now I'll just save it. Make sure you have auto save on your projects because I have faced a lot of difficulty. Uh, many a times your computer, even Maya crashes and sometimes it's, it's not even able to save your file properly. So it's a good idea to have auto save on turned on. So we still have to you know animate the ankle, but we will animate the ankle according to the movement of the hip because hip is what you know creates the cushion cushion here, right? so what i'll do now is i'll just you know quickly mirror this cycle to the opposite side side usually if you don't have any tool to mirror it like animbot what you will have to do is you do, let's say you select one of the controllers shift double click in the timeline so that ev every key gets you know selected right click copy and then go to the other other part and then paste the keys here 
so now you can see it's you know behaving perfectly similarly but you can see uh, even the translation x is you know going in the same way but we want this feed to be you know inverted so to invert the keys we have this tool in the graph editor if you go to edit and scale the options of scale so you have to you know keep the value scale pivot to minus one here and then click on apply so it you know inverts the complete uh, axis selected so now you can see it's moving outwards right same with the rotation y it's facing in the same direction but it should face towards the you know right side so i go into this so for inverting also i have added a shortcut in my keyboard and that is alt q so i just select the graph keys or the curve and just press alt q and it inverts the keys okay so now you can see it's inverted so this is how you usually you know do do the mirroring manually so you have to do this thing for each controller but to save time for the tutorial um, i'll just select this tool called animbot it's a amazing tool and it saves you a lot of time so i'll just delete the keys from this one completely and i'll select all these controllers okay and i'll select all the keys go to animbot mirror tool right click on it and click on mirror to right so it you know mirrored the animation but the axes are not still not working so i'll just quickly you know invert these things so alt q for this and sorry i just did something wrong yeah so yeah this looks fine to me rest of the controller should be working fine i guess so now they are moving together right so what i'll do is i'll select the controllers um on the right side okay just the right feed controllers which we have just mirrored and i'll turn on the infinity here in the graph editor okay i s i'll select the keys and i'll you know move the first key to our you know to the middle point of our frame range so right now we have 40 frames so i'll you know move um this complete animation of the second side to the middle frame so that is 20 so the first frame should go into the middle so now they will move you know one by one so after mirroring it i feel this is happening too soon maybe i guess um maybe we can you know or let's keep it to 50 again i hope that should work because we are not using any reference right now right so that's why it's a bit of a trial and error process to figure out the timing but i felt it was you know a bit more faster so let's scale it to 50 again so now the back uh, middle frame is 25 frames so i'll again mirror it to the other side turn on the infinity and this time the middle frame is 25 so i'll move the first frame to 25 now it feels slow uh, <laughs> maybe we can keep it in between 40 and 50 maybe or let's keep it 40 only um, let's not do too much let's keep it 40 only for now uh, if we feel like then we'll you know scale the complete cycle later so let's keep it 40 sorry for the confusion um yeah no, let's keep it like this so now we have the basic movement of the legs you know so i'll you know go to hip so again i'll go to the side view first and put a key put a key Usually what I do is I animate the translate Y first so that according to the you know, leg movements we can give up and down movement in the hip. So now you can see. Okay. So we are planting the feet 
almost on frame 38 or 40 right so just after we plant the feet right our body goes slightly down so th that is the down pose usually we learn in walk cycles right contact down up extreme and contact something like this so i'll make this one contact and just after the foot plant let's say our body move slightly down okay we will be changing the keys later but for now i'm just giving a rough giving rough keys you know to understand the movement and the timing we get so now it's the other leg is already in the you know um, already in the air so we have to move the hip up again and the weight is completely on the left feet right now because this feet is you know in the air the fingers are touching the ground but that will work on it later we can even you know maybe i'll just increase the value of translation y, translation y so that we get separation to understand properly so yeah so yeah back to hip so down normal con passing pose and then this will be the extreme pose maybe so i can move the hip more upwards here and our middle frame is 20 right now right so the same cycle same graph will repeat again because the hip is uh, in terms of translation y and rotation x the hip is same for both the foot steps okay because this is a cycle right we are not trying to give any variation so what i'll do is in graph editor i'll select these keys press ctrl c and go to the our middle frame that is 20 and press ctrl v in the graph editor so it will paste the exact same keys again and now i will turn on infinity so as soon as i turn on infinity you can see this this graph is you know it's getting distorted this is not working properly because if you select first and last last key you can see the tangent is you know not work, working in the flow of the graph so i'll you know try to make the infinity clean so like this so now we have a good flow you know the curve there is it's very curvy and you know working fine now so there are no uh, disturbances in the graph So now I can see it's you know going down very like it's staying up up for a very long period of time and then suddenly going downwards. So it's very sharp right now. I can feel it feels more like a you know um, hit or it's very sharp. So this feels like a jerk. So what's happening is from first frame and to the down pose right. This is happening in only three frames and the value is very big so what we can do is we can select these keys and maybe push them downwards to get an average you know movement so yeah let's keep it like this for now but let's save it so from the side view we have one more axis to work on that is rotation x so if you notice some reference you know i'll be you know uh, using the reference in maybe another video so that we can break down the reference and you know try to see exactly what what happens when uh, animal moves its body or some creature moves its body we can even analyze you know some of the work from some movies maybe jurassic park or jurassic world or any other movie like which you like so we can do a separate video on that also but for now like from what i have learned what i usually do i'm just going to show you that thing so it's not mandatory to follow me 100 percent but it's a good idea to know observe references how the hip is moving how the hip is translating sideways or front and back how the hip is rotating in all the axes how the chest works how the weight shift works how the foot plants work so yeah so for now i'll you know do it again from my imagination not imagination but from what i have learned you know animating dinosaurs or creatures for past couple of years so usually what i do is basically i try to you know lead the movement with rotation x and the translation y follows 
so now you can here you can see the translation is going down and then ba coming back up right so in this part what i'll do is i'll let's say i rotate the hip down i'll copy this key to the last frame also yeah. and while the hip is going down right at that time only i'll you know start move rotating the hip upwards so that the x rotation of the hip leads the movement and translate y follows it so you can see it's obviously it's ha happening very fast and very sharply right now so let's give a bit more of you know ease out we will be updating the keys again like i said before and i'll copy the same graph in the second half of the cycle because it's say like i said it's same for both the foot steps right so i'll select these keys press control c go to the middle frame that is 20 and press control v so it it's you know coming same now so you can see there is this hip movement but this feels like too much uh, the values feel too much so i'll just scale it down slightly okay so now i feel let's say we can you know rotate the hip downwards a bit earlier maybe yeah i will copy paste the keys here I'll paste the second half again. You can even delete these keys. It will come same, but I try try to you know copy the keys so that we get a complete cycle in the graph also. So now we have a good rotation X also in here. Um, we can polish it later, but for now this feels fine to me. So let's keep it like this for now okay so now let's move on to the back view or let's say the top view so one thing which you should keep in mind is uh, it's not mandatory but i try to you know animate all the x's so excluding the translate z i just usually don't animate the front and back in the hip or the chest but I animate the translate Y, I animate translate X and when it comes to rotation I animate all three ro rotations X, Y and Z because every X is gives a different kind of movement it, and it adds to the organicness of your animation. So let's go to the top view and from the top view whenever which whichever feet is moving forward right we have to rotate the hip towards that feet. So let's say on the first frame we have the left feet in for front so i'll move the you know rotate the hip towards the left side of the body so that it f it's favoring the left foot okay and i go to the middle frame 20 i'll just paste same keys on the first frame last frame and the middle frame but on the middle frame it should reverse right because now the right feet is in the front so we will just invert this i'll press alt q on my keyboard and I'll turn on the infinity so now you can see there is this sideways movement happening okay so right now it's happening very one to one right like frame 0 20 and then 40 so let's try to break this slightly so maybe this thing can happen I'll move this key backwards and give a bit more of you know ease out here so for two or three frames it remains it you know tries to slow down and then and then go back maybe something like this so i'll put a key on the middle frame i'll copy this graph here sorry yeah and the same frame yeah
So now I think the value is too much. It's rotating sideways too much. So I'll you know, you can press R in the graph editor and you know, click uh, go to the almost the middle part of the graph. Press Shift plus middle click and scroll sc uh, scroll wheel downwards so that it scales down or scales up. Or uh, if you have any bot, you can use this tool called scale scale from average. So you just select the graph and click on this it you know perfectly scales down the values so let's keep this rotation like this for now S next thing which we have to animate is is the weight weight shift the whenever the there is weight on one feet right so the our body moves towards that that side this is a very crucial th crucial thing in creatures or animals or even in bipeds so it doesn't matter what character you are working on, weight shifts are very essential because it, you know, uh, maintains the center of gravity and you get a good organic movement. So right now, you can see both of the feet are, you know, planted here. And almost at frame 10, you can see this, this feet is in the air and the complete weight is on the left foot. So what I'll do is, on frame 10, I'll move this here I'm just doing it very roughly right now okay so now you can see there is this if we go to the back view and see we have this tilt in the leg right earlier it was like this almost straight now we have this tilt in the leg so it's going sideways and then what I'll do is I'll copy the same graph again here but in the second cycle because we need to move it towards the right foot right so we will just invert this graph and select this click on auto and turn on the infinity so now the graph is not coming properly so let's just make the cycle oops what's happening yeah so let's make this cycle smooth so that it flows properly you know in the graph editor also so now you can see there is this side to side movement from the top view you can see the hip is you know so organic right now only one single axis made so much difference uh, it's auto saving yeah. so, so again uh, we have this movement but now it's very you know linear like slow slow one to one you know so there is no timing difference so what we can do is let's say right now the weight shift is happening exactly at frame 10 but if you notice this feet you know lifts up almost at frame 6 so maybe we can you know do this thing here okay basically you know make him go towards left a bit more few more frames earlier and right now after frame 10 it's you know coming back to this zero so but the f uh, weight is still on this feet right so i'll move this key maybe a couple of frames forward so that it stays on this on this feet for a few frames and then goes back so let's copy these keys and paste them here and invert them okay cool so we have slight variation in translate x also we can obviously polish these things like non-stop and till the end of the animation for a very long time also but let's keep it generic for now but you should you know get some idea how it works so now we can see the hip is you know working pretty good so now the only only axis remaining is the rotation z right so this is the rotation this sideways rotation so how it works is whenever the weight is on a feet right so let's say the weight is on this feet so we rotate the hip upwards on the same direction as the uh, on the on which the weight is so we have the weight on the left feet so we rotate the hip upwards on this left feet okay and we will try to keep it like this almost at frame 19 or 20 like when this other feet is planting right so we will keep it upwards only here okay 
so as soon as the feet gets planted okay so let's say it's getting planted i'll move this key to 20 only on frame 20 so just after the foot plant the hip move moves upwards so the feet is planting on frame 18 so let's say after four frames i'll move it upwards in this direction so now you can see there is this we have this you know certain move rotation sideways rotation happening okay so let's keep it for now keep it like this only for now yeah and paste i'll copy the first half paste it here and then reverse it so we have just have tuck, tuck, tuck. it's very sharp and jerky right now so let's tweak this thing so it's happening in only two frames so let's maybe make it three or four frames okay and also what i try to do is i try to give double double bounce whenever the whenever there is a foot plant so right now the hip is moving upwards and it's staying there gets stuck it hits a wall there's no movement happening after that so what i do is after there is a foot plant the hip moves for, uh, upwards goes uh, back downwards again then up basically there is a double bounce happening so let's try to implement that let's go to the back view so the hip is moving upwards so after three frames maybe i can you know move make it downwards again tuck 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 and then it moves back again to the top so let's copy the same keys on the second half also and not just mirror it make the graph proper so it's still a bit more sharp so let's average the keys out Okay, so this looks fine for now. So we are done with the almost done with the back body. We still have to work on the feet like a lot. We have to give more rotations uh, like Y rotations, Z rotations, and give more breakups. And we also have to animate the ankle. So let's quickly do it. Um, I'll put a key on the first frame and the last frame. So whenever the hip is coming downwards, right? So due to the pressure and to cushion the body, the ankle moves downwards also along with the hip. Oh, so, okay, sorry, my bad. Let's put a key. Yeah. So the hip is coming downwards almost on frame three or four. So let's put a key. Rotate the ankle downwards here. sorry so yeah you can see it's coming down but it's hitting a uh, hitting like a jerk and then you know stopping so abruptly so i'll give some ease out here maybe average this value also and then here you know we can maybe lead lead with this I think this is too much so let's reduce the value maybe no, this is too much <laughs> I think the ball roll is happening slightly late so let's 
move the keys yeah and so we have the ankle going downwards and then it goes upwards again and here it can maybe lead the movement slightly and when the feet is in the air I try to you know keep the ankle and this thigh parallel in terms of the shape I also feel the foot plant right it's very linear right now it's very you can see the graph editor is very graph of the translate wise very one to one like there are only three three keys happening so maybe we can make it a bit more sharper so instead of landing so smoothly it can you know um, hold slightly in the air and then plant the foot a uh, bit more sharply so let's keep it let's put a key here yeah this feels so much better now even we have the ankle animated this is not too much detail like we can give too much time to these things but for now this this looks decent to me so now let's mirror this animation to the other side or maybe let's finish this foot first and then we can move on to the front body okay cool so in the rig we have this rock anim uh, attribute right so we have this left to right you know rocking thing happening so we can use utilize this attribute since we have it in the rig so let's say when the when there is this thing happening right when the foot lifts so just to give some variation let's use this rock attribute maybe so it you know slightly rotates outwards and even when it's going to plant right so let's keep it like this um, so that instead of you know keeping it completely straight we can get slight variation in the foot plant also so it's happening in one frame i'll just tweak it to three let's check it once how it's looking mm -hmm. oh yeah this thing feels a bit jerky right now let's give some ease out to this key also ok so let's keep it like this let's go to the back view and we have to animate rotation y also so or maybe go to the front view so that we get because the hands are coming in the way so i'll just you know rotate rotate them upwards like this so that they are not you know coming in the way so yeah so maybe let's try one thing when the feet is going up we can rotate the feet slightly inwards and then it goes more outwards oh, like this I'm just trying something 
and then it goes to the resting position I don't like the rock animation it's coming very jerky I don't know why so I think it's happening too late yeah this feels fine to me so now we have the rotation y animated okay so now we have just have the rotation z so let's see what we can do with that thing um, so again when the foot is lifting maybe at that time slightly inwards and then it rotate outwards and then back to zero value okay mm, let's keep it like this for now <coughs> sorry you can also do one thing um, we have the pole vectors right so I'll just turn off the follow attribute so that they are not moving completely together with the legs I want them to be you know individual so when the feet is coming forward right so at that time what I'll do is I'll move the the knee outwards and then it can come back again and then give slight jiggle maybe now this might not look good but I'm just trying it this feels like too much so okay cool let's keep it like this save I'll delete the animation of the other side and let's mirror the latest animation we have I'll call this approved for now or finish not approved <laughs> so at least for now I'll call it finished this foot animation I'll just rotate it to the other side sorry mirror it to the other side so now I'll move the keys to the middle frame okay and now we have to flip the values whichever one is not working properly so I think we have to flip the rotation Z also yep I think this is working fine now um, so this value is moving outwards I'm just trying to cross check if this, if this is mirrored properly or not this is going inwards so we have to flip this yeah So let's call the back body done and now we will move on to the front body.